this module we will basically discuss about uh, the different types of network access uh, that are typically possible as well as very briefly talk about the different types of physical media that uh, we would be encountering in a network topology. So, when it comes to access networks, uh, how do we really connect the different uh, end systems to the router? Um, you have different types of mechanisms that is typically followed. So, it could be a residential access network, uh, if you are trying to uh, have a network uh, in our residences. Uh, it could be an institutional access network, uh, if it is basically uh, a organization or an institute or alternatively, it could also be a mobile access network uh, uh, that is uh, typically being looked at. So, irrespective of whatever type of network that we are really looking at, we just need to uh, keep in mind a couple of factors uh, with by which we decide what is the type of uh, network access network that we are going to really have uh, uh, finally uh, set up and configured. So, the two factors are one the bandwidth. So, as we already discussed uh, in the previous module bandwidth is basically the, the speed that is the number of bits that I am able to transfer uh, per second. So, that is the reason why uh, your typical uh, ISP provider asks you what is the uh, capacity of the bandwidth transfer that you really re require. Uh, based on which he will give you appropriate plan. And the second parameter is whether it could be shared or dedicated. So, when we say shared, uh, we essentially mean that on that same link, there will be multiple uh, users, whereas when we say dedicated, uh, the we typically hear about uh, something called as a lease line. right? So, depending on whether we are ok for a 10 Mbps shared line or a 10 Mbps uh, uh, leased line uh, is something that we require appropriately, uh, we will have to decide uh, what will be uh, the most appropriate uh, network uh, connectivity that will be uh, that we will be uh, going towards. Right? So, uh, there are different possibilities that is there. So, historically if you look at it in the residential access, uh, which is basically a point to point access, uh, it all started off with the dial up modem. Um, which theoretically had a maximum capability of 56 kbps. Uh, uh, this is this is just a theoretical limit, but practically it used to be much lesser. And uh, this was the oldest technology that was actually available, uh, uh, which which has been put to use uh, for network connectivity in the residences long time back. So the main problem with this was uh, we couldn't use the link at the same time for both uh, uh, surfing the internet as well as uh, making a voice call uh, as a phone. right? So, it could it could be actually used only for one of the two uh, uh, methods at any point in time. So, either I could actually uh, use it for data that is basically for surfing the internet or I can actually make a voice call at the phone, but I will never be able to do both of them at the same time. So, the main problem uh, that actually happened with the modem uh, dial up was that uh, it is something which uh, was expected to be always on and uh, if you are basically use the uh, use the, the dial up for your uh, data surfing uh, part of it, uh, you will not be able to use the phone at the same time for making a voice call. So, that turned out to be a very big uh, handicap, but predominantly nowadays uh, what we actually end up using is what is called as an ADSL. So, ADSL stand for an asymmetric digital subscriber line, where I will be able to make use of uh, both uh, voice uh, as well as data at the same time, as long as I have this ADSL uh, splitter uh, uh, with me. And so, if we actually basically approach uh, a, uh, a last mile ISP vendor today and if he tells that he is going to ins install an ADSL modem in your residence premises, uh, it basically will have the capability to uh, uh, allow both voice and data traffic to be going through it at the same time. So, typical speeds that I will be able to get is 1 Mbps uh, upstream and 8 Mbps downstream. So, 1 Mbps upstream is typically the traffic uh, speed that which that will be able to get out from the residence towards the uh, public network and the downstream traffic is basically what I will be able to get from the public network into my uh, uh, residential device. So, whatever device that I am using for connecting to the internet. Uh, in the residence. right? So, um, the, the basic reason why the downstream 
uh, as actually got more bandwidth here is that typically we will be able to understand that we would want to download more amount of data as compared to how much we would want to typically upload by default. So, very rarely we upload files or upload uh, uh, content, but we will be predominantly downloading the data across. So, because of which uh, you have typically a higher uh, downstream capability uh, available in the ADSL uh, connectivity. So, coming down to uh, a non-residential uh, uh, type of uh, network uh, access, uh, you would typically have a LAN network which we all would have heard of. Uh, uh, so, that is typically based on uh, Ethernet. So, when it is Ethernet, it is basically a shared or a dedicated link uh, which is connecting the end system and my uh, router device on that particular uh, LAN network. So, it could be either a 10 Mbps, 100 Mbps, Gigi and uh, today uh, it is also becoming uh, pretty common to actually have 10 gigabit Ethernet uh, uh, LAN uh, backbones as well. So, other uh, possibility other than a uh, wired network is to actually have a wireless access networks. So, this again is becoming very, very common in today's world uh, where uh, we have lot of uh, Wi-Fi enabled devices that we want to connect to the network. So, uh, I could really have a shared wireless access network uh, connecting my end system to the router and uh, what is actually used for this connection is something called as a base station or an access point. So, in short you will hear uh, something called as an AP. So, AP actually means access point. So, what is the purpose behind this access point? So, this access point can be sort of understood as a bridge device that is connecting my wireless devices right. So, my maybe my mobile phones, my laptops or uh, any other kind of mobile devices uh, from the Wi-Fi from the wireless medium into the wired medium. So, that from the Wi-Fi device I will be able to actually access the internet. So, the base station or the access point is going to be the sort of a bridge connectivity between the individual uh, Wi-Fi enabled host on my network to my public internet uh, which will be actually connected uh, over a, a router device. So, I could really actually go up to 54 Mbps theoretically uh, when I use a, a wireless uh, LAN network. And uh, when it is a, a wider area wireless uh, depending on whether I go for a 2G or a 3G or 4G, I will have varying bandwidths uh, that is actually uh, possible to be achievable at my end uh, in my end device right in my mobile uh, in my mobile device. So, in a home network if you see uh, I could actually have a cable modem uh, as one possible device or an ADSL uh, modem. Uh, depending on what kind of uh, connectivity the physical connectivity that I have gone in for my internet uh, uh, connection. So, I will have my modem connected with the router or the firewall. So, I will typically have today's world a device which will actually has the capability to run as a router device with an inbuilt firewall device right. Um, so, what is this firewall device uh, we would all have already got used to running uh, some sort of a firewall software, uh, it could be either at the software level or it could be in the hardware level. So, if I really want protection against certain types of inbound traffic from my public network into my network into my home network as well as a protection uh, for the outgoing traffic from my home network into my public network all those things are actually capable of uh, being implemented with the help of a, a firewall. So, in today's world I typically have a consolidated device which really runs the routing functionality and also uh, has the firewall functionality that I can enable uh, depending on what kind of policy I want to set for the traffic uh, to be allowed from the ingo incoming network to the outgoing network and vice versa back right. So, I will have the uh, router and the firewall functionality inbuilt into a single device to which I could actually have various uh, devices that is connected uh, over the wired ethernet like you see here. And I could also have the various kinds of wireless devices connected uh, over the wireless access point. So, this wireless access point you see here is the, the, the device that is going to connect this kind of a wireless uh, device with my wired ethernet uh, and possibly even to my internet uh, uh, outside right. 
Nowadays, we find that lot of vendors actually have got an integrated product which has the inbuilt functionality of being working as an access point. Uh, it could act as a router and also has the functionality of it working as a firewall. So, I have one simple small sized device uh, which, which could potentially fit in in one small corner of my table at home which has all these functionalities inbuilt into it and depending on my specific home uh, uh, network connectivity requirement, I could either enable or disable uh, any of these functionalities that is there inside this uh, device. So, in the physical media, uh, we will actually have different terminologies that are used. So, one which is the bit uh, as we are already seen, bit is the smallest uh, amount of data that uh, will be referred to in the networking world. Uh, which typically denotes uh, what is it that is getting propagated from my transmitting and transmitter to my receiver, right. So, physical link is basically the media, the physical uh, link uh, media at the, at the bottom most layer, uh, which is going to be connecting my transmitter and the receiver. And then we are going to have something called as a guided media and an unguided media. So, now what is a guided media is basically a wired media where uh, if you really look at a copper cable or a fiber cable or a coaxial cable, uh, whatever signal is actually getting transmitted at one end of the cable uh, is guaranteed to come out at the other end of the cable as long as I maintain my distance limitations uh, as appropriate for that particular solid medium. right? Whereas, in a wireless medium that we are referring to as an unguided media, uh, since the signals are propagating freely in a wireless medium, uh, uh, you, you cannot really guarantee that when it is getting transmitted from the, uh, the source host, uh, when, it, when, the, when the signals are going to go over a wireless uh, uh, medium like an, un, an unguided medium, uh, the, the signals will be reaching successfully to the desired strength at the uh, receiver end. Right. So, uh, in a guided media essentially uh, all kinds of cabled wired medium is referred to as a guided medium, whereas in an unguided media uh, you will typically refer to the wireless uh, medium when uh, the source and the destination are not really physically connected by a wire or a cable, but expect that, that signal transmissions to happen on my wireless uh, uh, medium. Right. So, you also have something called as a twisted ca cable uh, which is nothing but uh, two insulated copper wires uh, which are just twisted uh, so as to have the least amount of uh, interference. Um, so, what you typically find as an ethernet cable is basically a twisted pair cable internally uh, which has been actually insulated for you with an external cover. right? So, the reason for it being called as a twisted pair cable is because of the fact that internally you have two different cables which have been just actually twisted uh, together to have uh, as little interference as possible when the data is really getting transmitted across uh, that particular uh, physical cable. So, you have something also called as a coaxial cable or a fiber optic cable. Uh, so, the physical characteristics are different uh, uh, in both of them as well as the amount of bandwidth that I could possibly get uh, uh, is different. So, when I use a fiber optic cable, uh, I have typically a very high speed possibility on that uh, with the least amount of uh, latency and the error rates that is possible to happen on a fiber optic cable as compared to a normal uh, coaxial uh, cable. So, coming down to the radio as a physical uh, uh, media uh, as we were just discussing, it is basically a signal that is going to be carried in an electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, there is no physical wire or a cable connected and I could really have uh, that bidirectional transfer possible uh, over a radio as a physical medium. Uh, but the, the flip side to this uh, uh, advantage that we get. So, here I do not need to really lay any wire or a cable across which is basically a very uh, uh, huge exercise in terms of the logistical part of it. Uh, so, that is a big advantage that I have here, uh, but that it also has a side effects uh, in the sense that I could have a huge loss of bandwidth because of reflection. Uh, my signals could get reflected before it reaches the target receiver. Uh, my signals could get obstructed by objects in the middle. So, this is basically where we call uh, something called as a line of sight. So, we essentially say that uh, if there is a line of sight between the transmitter and the receiver, 
I will tend to have uh, higher bandwidth that is possible, but if I am going to have uh, obstruction by objects in the middle with the path between my transmitter and the receiver, uh, then my bandwidth is going to be getting that much reduced because of the fact that my signal strength is going to be very weak when it goes and reaches the receiver. right? And then I could also have interference with multiple people trying to transfer at the same time uh, and thereby uh, uh, not being able to uh, get a proper uh, uh, strength for the signals to reach the, the the receiver successfully, right? So there are different types of radio link uh, uh, types. I could have a terrestrial microwave link. I could have a Wi-Fi uh, link. I could have a wider area like a 3G or whatever, or I could have a, a satellite uh, uh, radio link also. So the different types of bandwidth are possible in various uh, the radio link types, and also different kind of uh, uh, physical requirements are there for each of those links and depending on where I am trying to actually set up this uh, uh, network with uh, the basic media to be used as a radio link, uh, depending on the physical characteristics of that place, uh, a appropriate type would actually be uh, made use of. Thank you.